Hey guys, I am going to walk you through the fashion illustration ready to wear collection project. Um, just hopefully me talking about it will clear up any questions that you have as you're reading through it. This is going to be um, a major project. Um, we'll have two of these and they take up very large portions of your grade. This project alone is worth 30%. We'll work on it for an entire month. So that gives you an idea of the importance of the project. And it's going to be due for presentation Wednesday, November 4th um, for a live session that you absolutely must be present to so that you can present your collection and we can give live immediate criticism to each other. It'll be super helpful. So this is going to incorporate all the techniques um, and design concepts that we've used so far. And you're going to create a fashion collection now of your own. So this will be like a portfolio project for you. So think about it like that. You're making this for your future so that you've got work in your portfolio to show to potential employers or to get an internship, etc. Um, you're going to make a collection for an existing contemporary ready to wear streetwear designer. And I'll explain what that means. Um, you're going to do thorough research of the brand. Uh, this project will include multiple parts. You'll have a mood board. Um, we've done a trend board, so it'd be very similar. You'll have a lineup page that shows all four front croquis. So this will be a small capsule collection of just four looks. And you'll have an individual page for each of these four croquis where you'll show front and back. And we'll talk about that as we go uh, with fabric swatches. So ideally, with this, you won't just be, you know, painting it um, or using marker and rendering it without a fabric in mind. You need to know exactly what fabric you're referring to and you need to show us and tell us and be able to talk about it. If you can't end up getting real actual fabric swatches, we can use digital um, swatches online. And again, we'll talk more about that as the weeks go on. So you'll have six total pages for this project presented as one digital file and we'll do a class presentation and critique. So the first step is going to be to choose a designer. So I've got here um, two sort of reputable brands, uh, Neiman Marcus and Nordstrom, and just kind of look to see what they were listing as current contemporary um, designers and clothing that they're selling right now. This shows me that, you know, this is what's out there currently. Um, so again, Neiman Marcus called it contemporary and Nordstrom called it ready to wear. It's basically the same category. So you can click on these links and you can look through the clothing that's coming up right now that's being listed um, in those categories. And then when you see the clothes and you can click on the designers that made them and then you can go and do further research on those designers. So contemporary designers are not extremely high-end couture. They're not Chanel, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana. Um, they're not these very expensive European brands. Our next project that we're going to do will actually focus on a couture designer, so you'll get a chance to design for them. Contemporary designers are aimed at a slightly younger de demographic. So for example, usually 60-year-olds are who's buying couture. It's very older ladies with a lot of old money or a, you know, a handful of very rich celebrities. Uh, 20 to 40-year-olds are buying contemporary. It's more affordable than couture. This is things that you're actually going to wear um, out. You're going to wear it on the street. It's why it's called ready to wear or street wear. It doesn't mean that it's casual or it's urban inspired. It means that you literally wear it every day on the street, not like to the Oscars. We're not talking gowns. We're not talking statement pieces. Um, these are everyday looks. Contemporary designers have price points in the $300 to $500 range, like for a dress or coat. And that's pretty broad. It might be a little less, might be a little more, but you really see the difference because couture designers would be more like $2,000 to $10,000 for a dress or coat. I mean, it's, it's a huge jump up. So really make sure that you're looking for designers that are in that contemporary price point. Um, contemporary designers might have a target customer who's in their 20s to 50s who works making 75 to 200,000 per year and needs to dress well for the office or their job. This is not inexpensive clothes. This is not stuff that you can typically get at the mall. It's not going to be, you know, anthropology or free people or stuff that you're getting um, for like, you know, 100 bucks at the mall. But it's not quite luxury either. You know, it's, it's definitely more specific. You have to go to the nicer stores to get it. 
uh, but it's not that ridiculously unattainable high end. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you're confused, this is where we're gonna do some research. So check out the clothing and the designers from the Neiman's and Nordstrom's list and research them. So you'll have to look at clothes, you know, go through the list of the clothes, look at ones that you like, and then start looking at who it says the designer is. You'll have to go to that designer's website. You'll have to actually start looking into them. So what is it that they sell? What's their design aesthetic? What can you find out about their brand? What's drawing you to them and what makes you think you would be a good designer for them? What fabrics and colors do they use? What silhouettes do they use? And then what are they missing that you might be able to offer? So what you're gonna do is pretend that you actually just got hired for this brand and you are designing their next collection. And this is very practical because these are the types of companies that you would get hired by. Um, the high-end couture Chanel and Gucci are European brands. Um, they have small design teams. They're not hiring anybody new. It would be <laughs> less likely you know, that you're gonna move to Paris and design for Chanel but very likely that a hip new young contemporary designer is looking for an intern or a design assistant right now. So this will be a really good project to show that you know this market. Um, and again, it'll actually be practical for what you'd be doing when you get out of college. So you're gonna pretend you just got hired for them. You're designing their next collection and you're gonna create a mood board with your unique ideas for their brand. So you're gonna give reference to your designer in the mood board. I wanna make sure that I see you know, who that designer is. And you're gonna include your own unique personal theme and inspiration um, for your collection for this designer. So you're not gonna just show me what they've already done. I wanna see a little of that in the board just so I know who they are and what they're known for, but you're gonna show me how you're gonna take it to a new place. Don't just give me what they've already done. So we're gonna aim for spring or fall, your choice, uh, which season you wanna design for, of 2021. Um, this is the future, so consider upcoming trends, not what's popular right now. Look towards what's going to happen. You're gonna tell a complete visual story that'll guide all of your future design choices, thinking about color, fabric, and silhouettes. Remember that the mood board is for you. Usually when I design a mood board, I literally put it on the wall and I stare at it and that's how I come up with my designs. Um, it should be actually guiding everything that you're doing and it answers all the questions. If you say, oh, what colors should I be using? What fabric should I be using? Your mood board is what literally is gonna give you that, um, give you those answers. So make sure that it's designed for you and that it's got everything that's telling your story in there. So um, again, we just went through this. You're going to give me in that mood board first, do Friday, this Friday, October 9th. So start thinking about that today, like right now, what you're going to do. Uh, make sure that you've shown thorough research of the brand and what they currently offer, who they currently are, because we might not know. A, a lot of times you're going to choose a brand that literally the rest of us have no idea. It's somebody new, somebody cool. So you have to show us who that brand is right away and also present your unique ideas and concepts. So um, don't, again, just show us what they've already done something new. So find a muse that you're inspired by, whatever it is, a movie, a music genre, historical era, political movement, a piece of artwork, whatever it is. The more specific and clear your inspiration is, the easier it is for you to design from it because it's just laid out there for you. All of your answers will be really clear. You must present this in a digital format, but you could make it by hand if you wanted and just photograph it and scan it for digital. Um, so this is going to be the first thing I would start working on. Also this week, you'll have your initial sketches. Um, we're going to do 40 initial sketches, um, and we'll have at least that many due every week until the final sketches. Basically, we'll do tons and tons of sketches so that we've got lots of good choices, and then we'll narrow it down to the best choices. So I'll be communicating with you every week giving you feedback constantly so that we can get this amazing collection, okay? Because our goal is to get four looks that are perfect, that have everything we're looking for, okay? Um, we want four complete croquis illustrated by hand with full detail and full color. So face, hands, and feet must be defined. And I want there to be a minimum of two garments per croquis. And so what this means is you can't just give me four dresses. 
if she's wearing a dress, well, then I guess she needs a coat too, or she needs some other piece, an accessory, something on top, something to push it a little bit further. And since this is a collection and it's a small capsule collection, we need to make sure everything's represented. So make sure there's a pant, there's a top, there's a skirt, there's a coat, there's a dress. The goal of any collection is for the customer to want to buy every single piece. So no repeats, not two pair of pants that look exactly the same because they won't buy both. They would only buy one. So you want each piece to be unique and amazing so that the customer literally wants to buy the entire collection. That's always the goal. You're going to give me a front and back view. So we'll talk about that as we go and work on back views. You're going to present each one individually on their own page like it's a piece of artwork with a fabric swatch. And again, that can be a digital fabric swatch or a real fabric swatch. That way you can tell us very specifically what fabric you're trying to tell us, you know, that, that you're designing with. And then you'll also do a digital lineup like a page. You don't have to draw them twice. Um, you could just, you know, have your scan or your photo of the illustration that you did and you'll pop them together on one page so that you can see all four fronts of the croquis lined up so we can really quickly see the whole collection on one page. You can use either paint or marker, whatever you prefer, but you'll definitely do these on um, 9 by 12 or 11 by 14 Bristol board, so a nice presentation board. This is not going to be done on sketchbook paper. You're going to have to buy this pack of Bristol board because it's going to look so much nicer. And again, these will be portfolio pieces. These will be pieces that you will end up keeping and potentially showing to an employer later, and then you can scan it or document it. Um, for the digital part of the assignment, but you'll also have these really nice art illustrations, okay? So that's what's ultimately going to be due is um, the final illustrations, but for this week what we need to focus on is our mood board due Friday. Um, I've also listed um, some resources for trend forecasting sites in Blackboard. So if you're confused about what your mood is, what you're interested in right now, that's fine. Take a day or two and just do research. Go through all the trend forecasting sites and sort of fashion um, update sites and see what's out there. See what gets you like excited. See what other people are doing, you know, and maybe that'll be a jumping off point for you, okay? You'll also start researching your brand and decide what brand it is that you wanna work for. And then once the mood board is done and you're sure about what you're doing, you can start working towards your 40 illustration. And with those, they don't have to be um, in the same level of detail that we've been doing. You don't even have to draw a complete croaky. You know, I don't need a face. I don't need hands. I don't need hair. You, what you're trying to do is just really get a lot of clothing out. So what I suggest doing is, you know, just tracing a bunch of croaky, almost like putting them even four to a page, like squishing them in there, tracing them, getting them ready, and then just drawing clothes on top of it, just like stream of consciousness, get as many clothing ideas out as you can. Okay, so the idea is that we get so many ideas on paper that we're bound to find something good. Okay, and then I'll help you narrow it down from there. Okay, so that's what's going to be due on Sunday is 40 illustrations. Um, you'll also comment on your peers' mood and inspiration board, and that might give you an idea, um, you know, what other people are doing too might be inspirational for you. That's kind of the point of all this is that we're inspired by each other. Ultimately, um, you know, we'll present this as a digital um, presentation, and again, we'll do it as a class critique. The design rubric is here. All of this is also posted in Blackboard, so you could always go back and look at it and reference anything. Um, I've got each individual assignment posted. So there's the whole project that I just went through here. There's a separate assignment page just for the mood board, and there's a separate one just for the sketches. So go through and make sure you're hitting all the points. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this cleared a few things up, um, but we'll again, we'll take this step by step by step over the next four weeks. So we will gradually answer every question we could possibly have, and we'll make sure that we get the best collections possible.